Good afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon, and I'm out for a little walk. Uh, it's a little chilly. <laughs> We're sneaking into the cold weather at night. It's kind of cold. And uh, so we'll soon see the seasons change more dramatically. Tonight we have a harvest moon, a large moon. And I believe Jupiter is still visible, uh, kind of uh, steering the moon. Uh, around the earth. So, uh, tomorrow is uh, Columbus Day. And as a kid, when they said Columbus discovered America, I didn't realize that they meant the Bahamas at first. And I conflated, I think, some of the images of Thanksgiving. That is, uh, people gathered together and getting along and so forth. But if you separate it out, there's a lot to learn from that period and conquering and the values of a civilization. For instance, when Columbus landed in the Bahamas, he was greeted by the Arawaks who were very impressed by his big ship. And uh, Columbus, a clerk from Genoa, believed that he'd actually reached the Far East. And he expected he was gonna find gold and gems and silks and so forth. And he later apparently testified that uh, he had gotten to India. So he was not a reliable reporter. But here's the thing that we are rarely thought, taught in school. I don't know if you had Samuel Eliot Morrison as your textbook. He talks about uh, these embarrassing facts about Columbus. And Howard Zinn has written a book which is replete with the difficulties, if you will, the challenges, the flaws, and the misconduct of the people going forward. So here we have the Arawaks, and uh, what Columbus finds is they all too easily give him things and trade for baubles. And he shows them a sword, a sharp sword, and they cut themselves out of ignorance of the sword. They don't know of war. They don't know of these things. They're very given. Now, the projection of Columbus is that there's gold in them, our hills, but he can't find any. And because he reports back that there's gold and everything else there, they uh, send 17 ships, so much for the the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, which go through the islands down there. And what he does is he repays the kindliness of the Arawaks by making some slaves, uh, by forcing them to work in mines and to find the gold that doesn't exist there. And when the gold doesn't exist, he sends them out and requires them to bring small portions of gold so he can report back he's found the gold that is not basically there. So that was, that's part of what begins the, the genocide, I suppose, because uh, it turns into a horror. And Virginia and, you know, uh, and Jamestown, uh, have their own problems. You know, we had the Powhatan, who, who was the chief in Virginia. And uh, what he finds is that the, they're taking him, they're taking stuff from them. And the Pequot were very upset about Jamestown. And the, and the, the thinking uh, of the Pequot was that we're dealing with an invader who thinks that we have no right by civil law, only by natural law, and so they can take it. And so there was this notion of international law. If you could eliminate the people who were there, then it was free for the taking. So these are the early sentiments of how we occupied the Americas. And we may not any longer just think of the Bahamas and so forth, and in better courses we found the various landings of the invaders, if you will, and what it meant to these colonies. And, you know, we have uh, Jackson was the great 
Indian killer and we made agreements over the years with Native Americans that we never fulfilled. And those we didn't kill, we tried to put on reservations and then we compromised them there. When I was in Santa Fe one time, I went out to the reservations and spent some time talking to the Native Americans about their plight, about their problem with alcohol, which we introduced to them, about the educations they try to get, about the jobs they don't have, about the social services they don't have, about the criminal justice system that compromises them. When I ran for Congress in a long time ago, in 1984, I met with Native Americans from the area. Some were descended from the Powhatans, and uh, we met at a bowling alley. And they talked about the things they'd suffered over the years. So it's good that uh, Monday is about the people who were offended, used, beaten, enslaved, killed, martyred for what they believed in. But it's not over. We see even today how pipelines will run through uh, sacred ground of Native Americans that are part of the territory that was given to them uh, in the so-called reservations, that is, re land reserved to them. So when we talk about Columbus Day and it's a day off and everybody's running around with the funny hats and talking about the three ships, we should keep in mind that history is more complicated than that, particularly when the capitalistic sentiment takes a people, and I don't want to make it sound uh, so innocent and uh, paradisical, but they were simpler folk as compared to the greedy, outreaching invaders of this land. We have to keep this in mind when we talk about our, our exceptionalism. Uh, when we strike out at other places for the civil liberties that we ignored, we should keep that in mind. We should always be striving to do better. And this is a good day for contemplation of that. Um, I found uh, when I worked for Zoe Lofgren as her chief of staff and special counsel, there was a uh, a tribe in San Jose that I tried to deal with the Bureau of Indian Affairs to have recognized as a tribe. And that's it's a land record historical research that, that they were doing. And I was of two minds. It seemed to be a legitimate application. Uh, in my time there, we did not resolve it. Uh, but the other side was there are some Native Americans that try to create reservations for the purposes of having gambling casinos there that allow them to be a place excluded from whatever the state's law is so that it can become an attractive nuisance, if you will. So these issues are very complicated, but we, we simplify all this stuff in America. We have a cartoon view of what our history is and what it's like. So if you wanted to read more, Samuel L. Elliott Morrison is a good place to stop because he talks about, he literally talks about the genocide of Columbus, but he, and he has a whole volume on it. But he also talks about him as a seaman, and he was very impressed in that regard. And you might find that part interesting. The uh, Howard Zinn, of course, he's very interested in those who are overlooked in history. So you'll find more about the people on the other side of the history issues that we are popularly taught, but without careful definition. I owe some of my understanding to this, to the advanced placement courses that I attended in, when I was in high school. And I, I, I read all these things as a kid and was fascinated because if you, if you follow what scouting is about, a lot of it is mimicking the tribe systems and the jamborees and eagle scouts have ceremonies that they duplicated. And maybe like other kids, I made things with, uh, with beads and uh, I tried to understand the symbol system. And as I got older, Joseph Campbell, uh, as a kid, 
would go into libraries and he'd just study em endlessly these things. He was a great mythologist and he was looking for what myths drove what peoples. So uh, reading Joseph Campbell would be helpful. So I didn't mean this to be a, a mini lecture, but it is, I guess. And the purpose of it is, I guess we all have to question the simple truths, often pablum, fed to us to foster a simplified view of how things happen and change. There's no question that along the way, marvelous things have happened in the Americas, but also terrible things. And we have to know both to avoid the latter and to foster the former. So I, I'm not in my cathedral of trees. I'm just on a road here because <laughs> I wanted to go a different way today. I wanted to see if there were maple trees down this road, and there really aren't. So uh, I stand here on, my, on, on a local road <laughs> talking to you the day before Columbus Day, and I hope you have a good weekend, and I hope you enjoy yourself tomorrow. All the best. Bye-bye.